this tutorial on how to run a simple regression. Here are my five scores on disordered eating and um, depression. And uh, uh, all we would do here is uh, we would go to Analyze, we would go to Regression, and we go to Linear. And uh, I'll put my predictor variable here for disordered eating and depression here. And uh, I'm going to click on statistics. And I'm going to ask that my descriptives get printed out. Um, and uh, then I'm also going to click on plots. And I want to do a histogram and a normal probability plot. And then plot my predictor variable here and my residual variable here. And this, these, this is important for evaluating model assumptions. I hit continue and I hit OK. Now, if you looked at the, uh, the, the tutorial that we had on uh, uh, how to calculate a Pearson R, you're going to find some of these values uh, look similar. Our mean of 78 and 77, our standard deviations of 13.51 uh, and 12.55, um, you know, our Pearson R of 0.693, um, we can go down here and we can see our regression, our, our beta weight of 0.64. We have that uh, regression squared value. And then when we took that residual value here and divided by 3, we got 109.13, which gave us an F value of 2.77. And our P value is 0.194. It's not statistically significant. So even though we're accounting for a large percent of the variance, 48% of the variance accounted for, we don't have a statistically significant finding because our sample size is so small. Remember when I told you you would never run a regression with just five? One of the reasons is, is because meaningful findings, like accounting for over half the var about half the variance, is non-significant because our sample size is so low. Uh, that causes a type 2 error. And here you can see that, uh, um, you know, I don't know that our distribution is going to be normal because we have such a small sample. Um, so, but that's, that's where the values come from uh, and how we can see uh, uh, whether or not um, uh, we have a, uh, uh, a meaningful relationship. Let me give you a, a, a different example. Um, and we'll use the uh, um, exercise uh, data set uh, here and uh, show you a, a, a little bit of a different example. Let's say we wanted to see if we could use age as a predictor of initial pulse before exercise. So does age predict pulse before you exercise. Now, we're not going to look at smoking status. So there are predictors we're not going to look at. Maybe age is a good predictor. Maybe it's not. But we have a sufficient sample size here. Uh, so uh, this is probably a better uh, analysis. And so we do the same thing. We go to linear regression. And I put in uh, age as my predictor and pre-exercise pulse rate as my criterion variable. And I say, let's print our descriptives. And then let's do our plots, our histogram, and our normal probability plot, and put in my predictor variable and residual variable here. And I hit OK. Well, once again, we don't have a statistically significant relationship. But why? because we're accounting for less than 1% of the variance in the model. This tells you that age is not a good predictor of pulse rate, that there are a lot of other variables that we would use to predict pulse and not age. You could be uh, a low age and in really poor shape, and you could be at an older age and be in really good shape, and so age is not a good predictor. We can see that Pearson R correlation of minus 0.26, which is basically saying as age increases, pulse decreases. That doesn't make much sense, does it? So we know it's a really bad predictor. Even if we have a somewhat normalized distribution, I mean, the, the distribution looks rather normal, and we have a 
uh, a pretty good um, uh, uh, meeting of our model assumptions of normality, but uh, we have such a poor relationship that uh, the data isn't really doing anything. We see no linear relationship here. So that is how you run a simple regression uh, in SPSS.